there definitely are some universal truths. One of those would be that everybody flipping loves pirates. Another one, these curtains right here, hideous. So is Flint Hook Jack Sparrow or is it a bit more Bob Sparrow, his sad little nephew collecting shells on the beach? Let's find out. story goes that you are Flint Hook, originally just a normal human being just wandering across the planet when all of a sudden an alien comes or ghost, we're not really told what it is, and takes over your character and gives him this hook and he becomes, boom, Flint Hook. Now this is a slightly strange idea but look, this is a game, it's supposed to be a bit strange and a bit fun. Everyone loves pirates, that's like... Pretty sure that's law here in the UK. So combining pirates, aliens, and spaceships gives it a slightly quirky twist. As you travel through the game, you will come into contact with some other alien pirate type dudes, and you do have to pretty much wreck them. And that's fun. The story is definitely secondary here, and it is a slightly roguelike game, so story isn't that important as we saw in games like Binding of Isaac. So Storyline receives a respectable 13 out of 20. Personally, I would have loved to have seen a linear storyline with non-roguelike levels and then the roguelike sections separately. The gameplay is a very different story and the game doesn't really do a great deal to introduce you to the mechanics. There are slight little tutorial elements of basic controls, how you jump, how you fire your hook and things like that and those are all handled really nicely. However, there's a lot more to the game that it lets you discover through play, which I always enjoy. You might be mistaken for thinking this is a linear game where you go from place to place, level to level, like you would in some platform games, and just collect loot. And that's pretty much what I thought to start with, but it's not that at all. If you've played a game like Binding of Isaac, it's much more roguelike than it lets on. You get a choice at the start of each round whether to attack one of three ships. Now these have different abilities, and different levels and they also have different loots, different rooms on them and it does give you an idea of the types of rooms you're going to find there so you have a kind of choice of going or well, do I go for this huge ship that has loads of loot on it but obviously it's going to be a lot harder or do I go for this smaller one that has a trader on it because I want to buy some things, maybe buy some new items so there is an element of choice the actual ship selection at the start isn't very varied and you do feel a little bit like you're seeing the same ship from the outside each time. When you get on the inside, there is a random generation element going on. And this is nice because it keeps things interesting. Again, with these types of games, there are hundreds of thousands of different combinations of ship that you can find. But once you've kind of seen the basics, you do start to see a lot of the same stuff over and over again. Now, thankfully, the stuff that you're seeing over and over again is really good fun and the gameplay is super tight. It has a slow motion mechanic, kind of like I saw in Bleed, where you can hold down the trigger and it slows that time down. This recharges over the next few seconds and you can use it again. You can fire your hook in all directions and you can also fire your pistols in all directions. The real hook here is that as you play through these different levels and collect loot, you collect these small kind of green gem things which unlock further gear. So there's this cycle of getting more treasure, which is, you know, the pirate way, and then unlocking more gear, which then unlocks these permanent upgrades that you can only buy in the black market trader that only unlocks when you get a certain number of these gems. So you can see there's this cycle that goes on. And thankfully, it's one of those games that gets more enjoyable the more you play. It's not like you're thinking, oh, it's gonna look the same, I'm gonna do the same. You, your skill set is leveled by the game which is one of my favorite elements in any game. And as you play and play, you're, you do feel like your character is getting more powerful and is becoming a better pirate. So for that, I would say the gameplay deserves 17 out of 20. While it is super enjoyable, it doesn't really tell you enough to hook you to start with. And you do have to persevere, I'd say for at least an hour before you're fully into the game and get really addicted to it. I don't want to say hooked because Check out the sound here from the intro of the game.
Everything about it is catchy, but also very Nintendo in the way that it has sound effects that you're going to remember. When you fire the hook, it makes this little sound that kind of reminds me of like a, a little ringtone or a little jingle on your phone that just sticks in your head. And you hear it so much during the game, but it doesn't seem to become repetitive. What does become a bit more repetitive are some of the theme tunes. Now, they, they're lovely. They're really nice to listen to. But once you've heard it for the fifth or sixth time, it becomes less, wow, this is really catchy and a little bit more, somebody shoot me. When you're playing for small periods of time, it's beautiful. You're like, man, this is uh, really, really nice. But it does loop quite often. And for me, this is an issue in many games. They get this lovely soundtrack, but then they overuse the same songs. I mean, nothing as bad as Hammerwatch, where they just kind of cut the sound and then looped it straight back in, in just a weird, jarring way. But this has some of those same issues with looping sound. So I would give sound and music 14 out of 20. It's a lovely soundtrack, don't get me wrong, the sounds of the game are really enjoyable, but there's just a little bit too much repetition for my liking. So I want to talk a bit about the graphics, but I'm going to combine that with the controls as well, which is a bit of a strange thing to say, but the game runs really smoothly and the graphics help this. The animations of your character are some of the best I've seen. I talk a lot about Celeste and how the controls are so tight, but also the HD rumble works well with what's on screen. And that's the same here, the HD rumble really adds to the experience when you're firing that hook or slowing that motion down. It rumbles just ever so slightly to give you that tactile feedback, which was really nice to see again. The animations are generally very smooth, but also really detailed. So when you do fire your hook or you do certain walk or run cycles, everything changes. It looks a lot more advanced than the graphics initially lead you to believe. Overall, I just really like the art style here. There's a lot of detail within all the small spaces around. When you get treasure, it looks bright and colorful and makes you want to go on this kind of loot hoarding spree. The loot that you do get on the screen does gradually fade away after a while, so you kind of go on this mad dash around the levels to clear it. But overall, I would say that the graphics and controls are very much tied together in this in the best possible way. I would give graphics here 18 out of 20. In terms of value, this game offers loads of it. From the unlockable black market items, to the perk system, to the roguelike elements of the different ships that you can go and visit. Some people don't really enjoy roguelike games because it lacks that kind of continuity between levels. But here it's done well, while I do think that perhaps it would have been better to have a storyline that had no rogue elements, and then have the other options for a challenge mode. Overall though, I would say the game is well worth your money, and I would give value 15 out of 20. So overall, we really enjoyed the game, and it receives a switch up score of 77%. We would have liked to have seen less roguelike elements in the main storyline and maybe a bit more of a linear one, but overall it's a really fun game and will keep you coming back for more and is one of the best action platformers on Switch. Cheers guys, make sure you like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and I'll see you on the next one.